Hey everyone, I hope you all are off to a very healthy and happy new year. I hope you guys are all excited about finishing up uh, this B body with a Spray Max clear coat. Uh, I'm going to talk about all of the equipment that I used here in the introduction of the video and I need to make a few things very clear for those of you that like to kind of skip ahead or kind of think you see what's going on and you move past something. If you do that in this video, you're going to miss one very uh, important issue that comes up. So I want to talk about it up front so that you don't miss this later on in the video and then you're confused about what's going on. So I'm going to be using a series of Meguiar's compounds uh, starting with the ultimate compound. Now I've used this in other video series before. You may be already familiar with it. I also used a Meguiar's ultimate polish and the Meguiar's Scratch X 2.0. Now, in doing a little bit of uh, online research, I've seen that they are now just calling it Scratch X. You may find the 2.0 still on the shelves, or you may just see it as Scratch X. But in the early stages of the compounding, after all of the wet sanding is done, so I'm kind of jumping ahead here to tell you what happens because it's a little bit of a roller coaster. I started out with the compound hoping that it would have enough strength in the grit to polish out the sanding scratches. So I started with my medium heavy cutting pad with the compound and after working with it for a good 20-30 minutes I started realizing that the media in this compound was not coarse enough to remove some of the fine sanding scratches. So I had to shift gears and that's the part I want to make sure you don't miss in the video is watching me go backwards in grit level basically the scratch x has a heavier more coarse grit level than the ultimate compound and what i found when i went backwards to a more coarse grit with the 2.0 it actually re removed all of those fine sanding scratches very well so this ended up being the winning combination for me even though i started with this so please get that straight before you start skipping ahead and I'm going to put links to all of this down uh, in the description below, along with uh, the pad system here. I've been using this pad system for many years. I've used uh, both that and my buffer uh, out in the garage on car projects and down here on the work bench on different guitar paint projects for many years, and it has served me very well. So I'm going to put links to this, but I start off here with these Hexlogic brand pads. I think it's by Chemical Guys. Uh, this is a medium heavy cutting pad and these are all color coded. Uh, this is the orange pad. This was the uh, most aggressive pad level that I used. I used this along with the scratch X to get the majority of the scratches out. And then I progressed to a light medium white polishing pad with the compound to refine the finish and then I don't have the uh, the little plastic wrap, but this is their this is their uh, polishing on the back here. Let's see here. Red is the ultra soft finishing pad for spreading premium sealant and wax coating. So I use this red pad as their softer pad with a polish at the very end. So I'm going to link all three of these pads. They're anywhere between ten to fifteen dollars a piece, and along with that, if you are not using some type of like an auto polisher like this you are going to be buffing forever by hand so i can't recommend this strongly enough get something like this this is a porter cable uh, this is model 7424 xp it's a variable speed random orbit polisher your speed control is back here i mostly work between speed level five and six and the random orbit uh, design is the most critical element of any polisher you're going to use in this type of work because what it does it does not go in a complete circular fashion it's it's random which means it kind of kind of moves the pad in a in a random sort of it sort of shakes the pad is what I'm getting at and what it does is it really prevents the burn through uh, that you used to get on those strictly like circular type of uh, old wool pads that you used to see in like drill bit chuck type of, of devices. So you need to get something that's got a random orbit uh, action to it or some some manufacturers call them DA or dual action. Uh, but either way you need to get something like that that's safe uh, for finishes that won't burn through. Now 
Before we even do the polishing though, you're gonna wanna get a uh, like a stepped system of these finishing level sandpapers. You're gonna get, uh, you're gonna need something that starts with 1500, 2000, and 2500. Now I find these little combination packs on Amazon for like $6 delivered uh, with Prime. I don't use the 1000 grit in this video, but it's helpful to have, I guess, if you're doing any other any other type of sanding, um, like maybe on fret ends or something like that. So it is usable. But you can get this combo pack for less than six bucks right now. Uh, 1500, 2000, and 2500 grit are all going to be used in this video. You get one sheet of 1000, one sheet of 1500, two sheets of 2000, and one sheet of 2500. I wish they gave you two sheets of 1500 because I, I used two. Um, so that meant I had to go get another pack. Like just like a, a dedicated pack of just 1500 but I get these uh, kind of at my local Walmart and auto parts stores. I also will be using the 3000 grit uh, from 3M as a finish, final finish sanding right before all the polishing takes place. So in total, all of this process took me roughly two, two and a half hours. Um, I tried my best to film the most relevant parts and edit it so that you could see all of the important steps that are being done without skipping anything uh, that was relevant in, in this scenario here. I got it down as short as I could, 45 minutes, I think roughly 50 minutes was the best I could do without leaving anything important out, but it does take quite a bit of time and a lot of elbow grease. With or without the polisher, you're gonna be doing a lot of, a lot of polishing work, so be prepared for that. But anyway, I just wanna introduce everything to you here before we get started and kinda of set the groundwork. And again, the result kind of speaks for itself over here. I think you guys are going to be really happy with how this turns out. And uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and kick it off. So here's another look at how that surface finish ended up curing after being sprayed out in the garage. We had quite a bit of dust nibs. We had some surface imperfections, a couple of drips out of the nozzle of the can and quite a bit of orange peel. So that's what we're gonna address right here in this video. All right, so I went ahead and just shoved some paper towel uh, material down inside the Floyd uh, bushing holes just to kind of keep keep water from sitting down in there. And I've also let the, uh, the 1500 soak up here in the water for a couple minutes, just enough to get it uh, a little softer, not so, not so rigid. Just gonna wrap the paper around the block so I got nice little uh, sanding block there we'll get it wet and I'm not applying a whole lot of pressure just enough just enough to start cutting in ever so slightly okay let's kind of wipe her down See where we're at. You can already see the surface turning that that matte, chalky finish. Let me get you in here for a closer look. And then what that's going to do, see, it's going to reveal just how much of a texture your finish has. See, now it's really helping all these little paint nibs stand out, all these little areas for me to focus on. See that those two there, a couple more over here. Yeah, so you're just gonna uh, repeat the process and get down until this entire surface is completely smooth and it's gonna look matte, uniformly matte, I should say. You want to spot check frequently. You don't want to just keep working and working and working and not not check as you go. You could end up going too far without realizing. All 
right, bring in for another close look here. Now that we've kind of gone over everything, you can just see down in here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and kick this over to our first time lapse moment. From this point forward, it's pretty much lather, rinse, repeat until you get the top of the body uh, level sanded and flat all the way around. All right, we'll take a quick pause here and check our work. After about 15 minutes of sanding with that 1500 grit, you can see the surface is uniformly leveled and all of those imperfections are now removed. So we're going to go ahead and flip the body over and begin the process on the backside. All right, so now both the front and the back of the body have been completely level sanded with the 1500 grit. You'll notice that all of the orange peel and imperfections are now gone off the front and the back. Now, you'll also see that I did not touch the sides or the roundovers at this stage. And the reason being is because those are typically, those, those areas are sprayed pretty smooth as it is off the gun or off the can. So to introduce 1500 grit scratches at this point doesn't make a lot of sense. It won't take much effort at all with the 2000 grit to get those areas completely leveled. So I'm going to save that for the 2000 grit in the next stage. I've got uh, a fresh bowl of water here. I went ahead and dumped out the water from the 1500. That way um, it reduces the risk of there being any contaminants from the 1500 grit um, in the water and possibly attaching itself to the 2000 grit paper. Uh, and introducing uh, scratches on the body. So now that we have flattened and leveled the body with the 1500 grit, then these next few layers of sanding uh, should go much quicker actually because with the 2000 grit, now all we're having to do is just uh, eliminate the scuffing and scratches from the 1500 grit, so on and so forth. So this, these next few layers are actually gonna go quite a bit quicker. Now that the front and back have been completed with 2000, I'm going to go ahead at this step and do the sides and the horns uh, with the 2000 here. Like I said, we didn't do that on the 1500 uh, because the uh, sides typically spray out much smoother uh, than the top and the bevels as well. So by holding off uh, to the 2000 or even the 2500 grit, you're basically saving yourself quite a bit of work and having to remove uh, the 1500 level uh, scratches. All right, there it is, the 2000 grit and the sides. 
I did I just noticed a couple of areas around the perimeter here that I'm gonna have to go back through so definitely uh, keep spot checking your work um, as you dry and move around some places will reveal themselves uh, that you might have missed so but uh, other than that yeah the 2000 grit goes by relatively quickly I think I spent all of about uh, 10 minutes on the front and the back and the sides now I'm gonna go back and touch these areas up right here on the roundovers after about 15 minutes with the 2500 grit this is what we have here we are now moving up to the final uh, hand sanding stage and using this 3m 3000 All right, so now we're going to go to the medium heavy cutting pad. I get these on Amazon. This is a, um, I believe it's a five inch pad, and you can see there's a color system. The yellow is the most uh, aggressive. The orange is the second most aggressive. That's where we're at here. What I'm going to be doing is applying this Meguiar's Ultimate Compound, and that should start to bring this shine back. So I'm going to go ahead and load this. I'm gonna go ahead and load that orange pad here into this Porter Cable Random Orbit Auto Polisher Model 7424XP, which I briefly talked about in the intro of the video. I'll drop a link below, but it's a very important tool to have. Looking pretty good in most areas. Looks like I need to spend more time down here. I'm going to work some more with this and see if I can get it where I want it to be.
All right, I'm getting happier about that. The further I go, it's coming out really nice. All right, if you remember at the very beginning of this entire video when I mentioned that there was a specific point in time when I decided to switch gears a little bit with the compounds, this is it. The Ultimate Compound was doing a decent job, but not good enough. So this is when I switched to the Scratch X 2.0 and the Orange Pad to get out a lot of this uh, kind of hazing and uh, heavy sanding scratch marks that are still visible in the paint at this stage. So this is now the Scratch X 2.0 with the Orange Pad. Oh yeah, much better. Much better. In fact, I think I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna flip this back over and use the Scratch X 2.0 on the other side. Oh wow, big difference. Huge difference in fact. I don't know how much of the kind of micro scratches the camera was picking up earlier, but they are completely gone at this stage. Beautiful gloss. Very, very nice. Excellent. All right, I'm going to proceed with the sides and the horns.
All right, so for the horns, this is the most trickiest area. What I have here is this round uh, foam bit that fits in a drill. It's my uh, Black & Decker uh, variable speed drill. I got this off of Stumac, and uh, it's a really good tool. Uh, the thing you gotta be really careful of is that, that plastic backing. So as you compress this foam, you have to be sure not to catch that that plastic backing anywhere onto the body. I think for this, I'm just gonna apply it by hand in here. That way I know there's some already spread in there. And then I'm gonna, cause this is the surface that's gonna be making contact. Yeah, it only takes a couple of seconds there. It's not uh, something to be real aggressive with, I don't believe. And we'll load up this side. This side's a little easier to get to. Now I'm going to flip it so that the sponge, this foam applicator, will now be going the opposite direction. Like I was saying, that takes a steady hand. So if you're not comfortable with that, maybe use something less aggressive. Yeah, I think that's a good enough result in the horns. Rest of it can be polished up by hand. All right, so now that I have the result I'm looking for, I've got all of the scratching, micro scratching removed from all of the sanding. Now I'm gonna switch gears and go back to a white pad. So again, if we look at our, our packaging here, we were using, let me get a cleaner. So we were using the orange pad with the Scratch X, which is a medium cutting pad for heavy swirl scratches oxidation. We're gonna jump up here to the white pad, which is light polishing pad for light defect removal and fine finishing. So I got a white pad. Again, these are on Amazon. Uh, the brand of these is HexLogic. I'm gonna put that on the Porter cable. It's a hook and loop system. And I'm gonna go back to the compound that we started with so obviously in terms of abrasion this scratch X did a much better job of getting those uh, sanding scratches out so there is a, a heavier grit um, of media in the scratch X that I use with the orange pad so now I'm gonna go back to the ultimate compound which has a lighter grit and the white pad and polish the body
ahead and get these sides again. I'm hanging it off the edge of the workbench. Wow, this thing's turning out really nice. Really happy with that result. All right, I'm gonna do one last thing and then we're gonna call it good. All right, we're gonna advance it one more step. As you can see, I've got a red pad loaded up in the Porter cable and on the scale here. So we started with the orange, we just went to the white, and now we're going to the red. And the red is ultra soft finishing pad for spreading premium sealant and wax coatings. All right, so we're gonna use on this step, the Meguiar's Ultimate Polish, which is again, a lighter, lighter grit compound than the Ultimate. Well, it's like glass. Amazing. Wow, I hope the camera's picking up on just the overall uh, super glossy finish and reflective shine down here on the workbench uh, under these kind of harsh 
very bright shop LED lights, but uh, the finish in person turned out absolutely stellar. I uh, really couldn't be happier with how well this Braymax turned out, especially for a DIY project. So here's another look uh, with the body filmed in a more natural uh, type of lighting environment with some sun coming through some windows here, just so you could see that it is just as beautiful, just as reflective away from those uh, stronger LED shop lights. But the finish turned out absolutely amazing. Now, since this was my first time using the Spray Max 2K Clear Coat, I thought it would be helpful here to throw out some pros and cons that I learned uh, throughout this process to maybe help some of you that have never uh, tried this method before. So I thought maybe we'll take a look at a couple of these cons here first and we'll start with the short pot life. And what that means is uh, once you mix the 2K component or the catalyst uh, inside the can, once you activate this can you only have a 48 hour window uh, to spray any uh, paint out of that can. Otherwise after that 48 hour window pretty much anything left inside the can is going to go ahead and solidify and cure over and harden and it will not be usable. Secondly, I think we covered this fairly well in the previous uh, episode. This type of paint can be hazardous if precautions are not followed and obviously it comes with all types of warnings on the label. So PPE is definitely a must. You need to spray this in a very well ventilated area and you definitely need to have on full level PPE. To work with this type of paint and that goes with any 2k paint system really and finally it's the untested durability this is the first time i've used it so i have no history uh, with this paint product i don't know how well it's going to withstand uh, scratches and hold up to the everyday wear and tear uh, that you encounter when you're playing all the time and let's go ahead and take a look at those pros uh, at the time of filming i paid roughly 40 to 42 dollars for two cans of the Spray Max 2K. So it makes it a very cost effective way to achieve a very high quality finish. I mean, just look at this thing. I mean, it's a pro level result. We did it all with DIY methods. Um, you really can't compare this to anything else in this price range, uh, especially in the world of 2K paint. So this is probably the most cost effective method to get this really pro level result. Also, there's just no expensive equipment to buy. You don't have to go out and get an HVLP gun. You don't have to use a compressor or a paint booth. Uh, you don't have to buy, you know, $100 uh, kits of expensive House of Color paints to achieve this finish. And last but not least, this paint system was also very forgiving. I mean, I was able to sand out uh, any problems that I occurred along the way. All of those uh, drips and paint nibs easily came out. Here's that area that I burned through earlier. This was all uh, easily rectified because the paint was very easy to work with. All in all, this makes this, in my opinion, probably one of the best DIY professional grade finishes that you can use or buy today. So guys, this is going to wrap up the Spray Max 2K portion of this video series. You might recall I still have a second body that I promised I was going to spray the Stumac nitrocellulose lacquer finish on. I do plan to do that in the very near future, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, if you're getting ready to start your own B project or if you're in the middle of it, if you have any questions or comments, definitely drop them down below. I always appreciate uh, hearing from other people about where their project is at. So guys, thanks for watching and take care.